What's up divers? In today's video we're going to be going over how to use a compass underwater for beginners. So let's get to it. Thanks for joining me today on our channel, Azul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and today I just wanna break down the basics on how to use a compass so that you're not wandering around like this anymore. General rules for using a compass are trust your compass. If you're convinced that your compass is wrong, just forget about it, it's your brain. First, let's go over the parts. The most important part of the compass is magnetic north. This is the part that you trust. Unless you've cracked this casing, it's always going to be pointing north. Compasses also have on this dial the other directions, east, south, and west. There's also along the edge usually a bunch of numbers. And for beginners, I tell all of you guys, just ignore the numbers. Numbers can be really useful if you're starting to get into more advanced navigation, but for beginners, it tends to just confuse you because math is hard. And when you go underwater, whether it's five meters or 18 meters, you tend to just get confused easier. <laughs> you're kind of overloading your brain a bit, so you really want to keep it simple. Next up, we have the lubber line, and that is a either single or double red line that's painted on top of the face of the compass. This line doesn't move. It's really just used as a way to guide yourself in the right position so that you can set an accurate reference. We'll go over how to set up a reference a little bit later in the video, so stick with it. The next part of the compass is the bezel. The bezel is super important for setting the reference and making sure that you actually follow the right direction through your dive. The bezel should move freely, so when you're looking for a compass to buy, you want to really think about that. Usually the bezel is quite large and it's easy to move, but sometimes they're a little bit more finicky. And so you want to think about that in case you are going to be diving in cold water and you're going to be using gloves, you want to make sure that it's something that you can manipulate easily. If you are in need of a compass, I've linked a couple of different options in the description below, so feel free to check that out. Another part of the bezel which we use to make that reference are the index marks, okay? They are just pieces of plastic that make arrows on the face of the compass, and that allows you to set your reference, and they serve as a guide as you move through your navigation. And then lastly, we have the side window. This window is on the compass so that you can easily see the numbers. And again, using the numbers is a much more advanced navigation technique that we're not gonna cover in this video. So you can really ignore this window. You don't really need to use it as a beginner, but know that the window should be facing your body. Two different ways to use a compass underwater are wrist mounted and console mounted. Okay, console mounted is really nice if you just wanna have everything integrated into your equipment. The only thing that you need to be aware of is the position of the compass when you go to use it. You wanna make sure that you are getting Getting it flat because it's attached to your SPG and everything else sometimes it can be easy to just have it tilted slightly so that's just something to be aware of if you're using the wrist mounted compass uh, you'll need to make sure that you are aware of your body position so that's where you can have some uh, issues in regards to accurate reading also for the wrist mount when you buy the compass it's gonna come with a very long tail and this may seem kind of weird to some people but remember these are sold so that they can go over really thick bulky dry suits okay so that's why it has so much of this extra tail if you know that you're going to be a warm water diver you have no interest in doing cold water then you can feel free to to trim this but if you're thinking about doing cold water diving at some point in the future you definitely don't want to trim the fat here because this is going to be really essential to being able to actually put it on with that thick exposure suit okay i just did what i told you not to do <laughs> put the window facing you <laughs> When you put the compass on as a wrist mount, again, you're gonna want to have that window facing you. You're gonna wanna make sure that it's steady, so it's tight enough that it doesn't move, but not so tight that it cuts off circulation. Then, when you go to use it, you wanna make sure, like I said before, that the compass is flat. 
okay this is where you're gonna have the most issues as a beginner you need to have the compass flat if you're gonna be reading it so the way that we typically teach this to beginners is to take this sort of Superman pose and it's a little dorky but you'll see why you send your arm out the arm without the compass straight out let's get into frame okay so we get it straight out and then we put the compass arm right here to make kind of a figure four with our arm. Now this looks strange, right? But it's really good just to be able to ensure that the compass is flat and get your reference, okay? This does not mean that we want you diving like this the whole time, which a lot of you do in the beginning. It just means that you get into that position, you read where you're supposed to go, look forward, find something in that line, that direction in which you want to go, and then put your arms down, enjoy the dive, and go towards that natural reference point. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And remember, if you want to support this channel, check out our merch. We have a link to it in the description below. Get yourself a shark lover's sweatshirt. Let's get back to it. Understanding the compass is super important to scuba diving because when we get underwater it's very easy to get disoriented. That's why having a compass is very important to having confidence when you go for your dives. In every single paddy course that you take for training you will be working on compass skills. Open water, advanced, rescue, dive master. If you're brand new to all of this and you're interested in getting your open water certification make sure you check out our video on the open water course. I've linked it in the description below. In the beginning, the open water course, you're going to be focusing primarily just on what the heck is this thing and how do I get from point A to point B. When you get to the advanced course, you're going to be learning a little bit more. Learn how to make different shapes. When you get to the rescue course, you're going to be learning search patterns because that's part of being a rescue diver. So that means that each course just builds on the complexity. In this video, for you beginners, I'm just gonna focus on two super useful patterns that you can use underwater to navigate your open water dives. The first one is a straight line navigation followed by a reciprocal. The reason why this pattern is so useful and is the first thing that you learn with the compass is because you can use it to go from the boat or the shore, find the dive site, and then make your way back to where you started. Real world diving tip for you. Point your body facing the dive site. Get your compass, get that lubber line pointing in the same direction. Make sure that your compass is flat and you're gonna move the bezel so that magnetic north is in between your index marks or pointing at an index mark, depending on what type of compass you have. A really important tip for beginners, okay? Once you set your reference point, do not move it, okay? That needs to stay static so that you know where you are in the world. Now, when you go underwater, you're gonna check your reference. You're gonna make sure that north is marking that point that you, you made at the surface, okay? So you're going in the right direction. You're gonna swim, and then when you arrive to the dive site, you're gonna stop. You're gonna take note of three different items on the reef that do not move. So this would include a really colorful sponge, a certain type of coral, things that don't move. Don't take note of the fish that are in the area, okay? Because that is not a good natural reference. You wanna find three things that you will remember that are in the same general area and mark what depth you're at as well. Then you can go and explore the dive sites. Once you've reached your turnaround point, you turn around, come back towards the area where you started, and once you see those reference points, you just need to stop, get your compass out, make sure it's flat, turn until you find south, pointing in those index marks. Once you have south there, you know that your starting point is in that direction, so you can just follow that back to the boat or the shore. If you're diving in low visibility, you're gonna have to be really careful and refer back to your compass more often. You're not gonna be able to rely on natural navigation as much because you probably won't see far enough ahead of you. When you're going in a straight line, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that reference marker, the direction that you've chosen, north, east, south, west, 
whichever one it is, stays in between those index marks. If it happens to go out of your index marks, that just means that you've turned slightly into the wrong direction. You need to stop, turn your body until your reference direction is in between those index marks, and then just continue on. You'll need to refer back to your compass often. Just make sure every time that you do that you have it flat and you won't go wrong. Our next super useful navigation skill for beginners is the square. The reason why the square is so great is because your dropping down point, the place in which you start the dive, you know, right? That's a point that you know. So in doing the square during your fun dive, you know that you're gonna end the dive at a certain depth. This will allow you to plan accordingly for safety stops even on dive sites that you're not familiar with. And here's how it works in the real world. When you drop down to a reef, and I recommend using this in a place where you can actually drop down to a spot that's a little bit more shallow, maybe five to seven meters if it's possible, you want to do the same thing when you drop down. You want to take a reference. And what's really important here is to remember the depth. I already mentioned that in the previous skill, but it's really important here so that you can make a dive plan from that first reference point. You'll know that when you end, you're going to end at a specific depth, which will allow you to come up for that safety stop. During this navigation, you're going to be using the compass in the same way, but you're not going to be turning completely around. You're going to be doing 90 degree turns, right angle turns. This doesn't mean that you need to use the numbers, just use north, east, south, and west. Once you have your reference points and you know your starting point, you take a look around the dive site. Maybe you want to go towards the deeper part of the dive because we typically try to have the deepest part of the dive at the beginning of the dive and then slowly edge our way up. You do the same thing as you would in setting a reference for a straight line navigation. Once you have gone a certain amount of time, you can decide that you're going to dive that way for a couple of minutes or a handful of kick cycles, whatever you decide to do, depending on your dive plan, how long you want your dive to be. Then you're going to turn until the next direction point is in between those index marks. Okay, so that can either be west or east, depending on which direction you want to go. Then you'll do the same amount of time or kick cycles in that new direction. Just exploring, exploring the dive site. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect for this. Once you've reached that, you look at your compass, you're gonna turn again. And this time south is gonna be in between the index marks. Same, same. You go for the same amount of time, kick cycles, whatever you determined before the dive. The last one, you stop, turn, and it's gonna be the last direction point that you haven't used yet and that's gonna send you towards that original location. Depending on current, surge, your accuracy and timing, the different lengths of your square, you may not end up in the same exact spot, but you'll be in the same general area. All right, guys, that about does it for me. If you have any questions about how to use a compass or anything, especially for you beginner divers, just write to me in the comments below. If you're new here and you enjoyed this video, as always, give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future content. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.